Now, yesterday was the 200th anniversary of the release of Jane Austen's book, Pride and Prejudice. And to celebrate, a Derbyshire Dolls house maker has created miniatures of the characters Elizabeth and Darcy. Well, our reporter Nigel Cash has gone to find out more. Nigel, are you just surrounded by dolls at the moment? I am, but more in particular, I'm surrounded by Dolls Houses because that's where I have come to, actually. It's the Dolls House Emporium, just between Codner and Ripley. And I'm standing by, I think, the grandest Dolls House I've ever seen, Sally. It stands. Well, it's actually on a plinth at the moment, but if this was to stand on the floor, this would be about five feet tall, I guess. It's five storeys. It's got a very grand entrance on there, on the front of it. Um, probably something like you'd see uh, at the front of Kedliston Hall because it's got sweeping um, staircases that come down. Then it's got four stories above that and rooms in the attic as well so a five-story building here and and that's just one of many that are on offer uh, here at the at the Dolls House Emporium and with um, uh, Patrick Astle who's um, going to tell us a little bit more about these characters that they've had made and commissioned to commemorate the 200th anniversary just standing looking actually at Mr Darcy who's um, resplendent just in front of the house and you're holding uh, Elizabeth tell me a bit about why you've decided to go down this line and have these characters made well, these are very special dolls, as, as you spotted. They're, they're to celebrate the anniversary. Um, we've had them created for our um, collectors who uh, like to put them in and around the dolls' houses or just have projects with the dolls themselves. Um, they're top-notch, uh, high-specification dolls in porcelain. Um, they were designed in England um, with masters made in casting porcelain here. And we've dressed them in the... In, we took inspiration for their outfits from the 1995 BBC television version um, of Pride and Prejudice. So we have Darcy in his um, navy blue waistcoat. He's got a fitted morning suit with a cravat and his top hat. He's got lovely sideburns as well, which have been in the news for other reasons lately. <laughs> yep. Elizabeth's hair's um, curled and starched. She's got an ivory brocade wedding dress with her overdress and veil, and it's quite a detailed costume. She's actually wearing silky bloomers with lace detailing underneath. Really? You've been, you've been having a look, have you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we tried to get everything right here. They're, they're about six inches tall, so they're, they're perfect one twelfth scale, which is what everything here is for the people who collect our items. And actually, when you just look at them standing there, actually, I think anybody who's seen that TV series will see straight away the likeness of the, of the characters in it. It was a very popular dramatisation, wasn't it? It was, and, and that's one of the reasons we've gone down this, this route. We've got um, a collector's set available to go with it of, of a few uh, accessories that people can get if they're regular customers here. Um, these particular dolls, we've only got two in at the moment, but they will be available to order from the end of this month, and people can actually come in and see them um, halfway through March, see what we've got. And how unusual is it to get characters made like this, representing characters from, from, from literacy, from different novels and such like? It is unusual. They're, they're, as I said, they're a very special um, uh, collection. It's, it's, we, we do um, little uh, projects every now and again to, to get a bit of extra interest in. Mm. But is, is it something you've, you've done before with different characters? Uh, no, this is, this is the first Sorry. time we've done this. It's, it's something that we find people, will, they'll save up especially to, to buy the special items like this. And looking around the showroom, um, I mean, I think I've read that you've commented before, um, these dolls' houses aren't just for children, are they? There are collectors that, that come from a long way away to, to actually get something like this. What sort of people collect and, and, and will actually have these products on display? Uh, we, we find that it's mostly uh, ladies whose children have grown up and left home and given them a bit more time uh, and space because they can vary from a small £50 project that you could put on, your, on the kitchen table to something as grand as this Grosvenor Hall that we've got, um, which can cost literally um, from a couple of thousand pounds upwards if you wanted to, to make it all, uh, all singing and all dancing. But in, in terms of the, those people that, uh, that are actually coming along, I mean, uh, the traditional doll's house, the ones that uh, uh, people would have played with when they were little, um, is it the same sort of thing? Do people who collect this sort of doll's house, do they collect them to have them as like a second childhood and play with them, or is it just to put them on display in their houses? Well, what happens when people buy them as a kit? They'll, they'll get all the bits and pieces inside, they'll decorate it themselves, and we find that it brings the whole family together. It's, it runs across the generations. So we'll have the, the grandmother playing or building with the grandchildren. It's not so much playing. Um, we find men sometimes are involved with this hobby. We have a competition we run every year, um, and we get almost as many entries from men as we do from the ladies. 
Right, so a, a chance to, do, to actually do a bit of building, some bit of handicraft, so forget the airfix models or, or something that the, that the dads might be doing. You, you reckon that they can be just as adept at building a doll's house, do you? It is. It's the craft aspect of it, really. It's, it's kind of an alternative to, to the model railway for a man who's got that kind of craft uh, uh, inspiration. And in terms of the leisure industry at the moment, obviously people we hear all the time about people tightening their spending. This has got to be a luxury expenditure, hasn't it? Is, are, are you seeing that trade is slowing because of the, 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 the economic terms that we're dealing with at the moment? Um, business is steady in the current climate. We've got things, items here to fit every price and every, and every kind of buyer, really, with the smallest builds from £50, as I say. Um, but people will save up for the special items. We find it is that... Uh, a very rewarding uh, hobby from that point of view and you and you will whatever you collect whether it's wine or or, or uh, teletubbies or whatever if you've got that special item you'll save up for it and, and make it worthwhile and just going back to mr darcy and elizabeth here have you had much interest in the fact that you're having the characters done to to tie in with that 200th anniversary well, our customers do look forward to this kind of launch. We haven't told them about it yet, so you've got an exclusive on your hands. <laughs> right, well, it's, it's certainly well-timed, isn't it, with yesterday being that 200th anniversary. Do you expect them to be very popular? I think there will be. I think there will be a collector's item. They they are so authentic, Sally. Just looking at them standing in front of um, this, um, it's the Grosvenor Hall and Basement that we're looking at, and we've got them on display. We'll snap some pictures, we'll send them back, and we'll get them onto the website later. Brilliant stuff. Nigel Cash there talking to Patrick Astell from the Dolls House Emporium in Codner. And, uh, of course, in celebration of the 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, which was yesterday the official anniversary.